Hi! As promised, I'm here to tell you how I knit my fingerless mitts. Um, these are fingering weight convertible fingerless mitts. And um, I have a couple of other objects to show you. Right, as I said, these are um, fingering weight. I used the Manny Petty Lion Brand yarn that is 75% superwash wool and 25% um, polyamide, I guess, like a nylon type. And I bought mine at Joanne Fabrics. I purchased two skeins of it because I wasn't sure how much I would need, but I have um, probably a full skein left. However, I did want them to kind of match. Um, so if you just had one skein, you may or may not be able to get them to, um, to match up. Okay, so like I said, this is how much I have left. I knit mine on Chalgu 9 inch circulars. Um, this is the first time I've ever tried using these. Um, and they, I wasn't sure because they're so tiny. And the, just the, they're just tiny. So knitting with them is just little, <laughs> which is funny. But I actually really liked it because I didn't have to deal with a magic loop in that, um, like dealing with your cord and all of that. Before we go any further, I should introduce myself. I am Gaby, Gaby's Goodies on Instagram and Ravelry, and I'm on loveknitting.com as well. And um, I write patterns occasionally, and I am knitting obsessed. So I knit all the time, <laughs> or whenever I can. Okay, back to the mittens. I knit mine on a, uh-oh, I gotta figure out what size needle they are. I think it's a size two. I will put that information up right here on the size of my needles. Okay, and these are knit from the fingertip area down towards the wrist. And for this size that I'm wearing, I guess adult lady size, um, I cast on 56 stitches and join them in the round, like this. This one is actually smaller. I'm making a um, kid version. So I cast on 56 stitches in the round, and then I knit um, a one by one ripping. So it's just knit one, purl one, all the way around for um, however many inches it takes to get from about your fingertips or wherever you want it to be once it's unfolded, uncuffed, to the base of your thumb. So you knit that one by one rib from your fingertips. I did just below my longest fingers here. Um, so I did from covers up my pinky and then my other three fingers stick out just a little bit. So I knit one by one ribbing in the round 56 stitches until I get to this part of my thumb, like the base of my thumb. And at that point in time, oh, one more thing, I kept a stitch marker to represent my beginning of round. If you can hear my son, he is playing with um, another kid and talking to him on Zoom. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I put a stitch marker here uh, to represent my beginning of round. 
And so when I get to the base of my thumb, When I get to the base of my thumb, I cast off six stitches loosely. So I bind off six stitches loosely, and then I just knit around. Not knit one purl one, but just knit around. And then I cast on 10 stitches, okay? So after you've done your ribbing at the base of your thumb, you bind off six stitches, knit all the way around, and then cast on 10 stitches very loosely, not super tight. And then I knit back around. So my beginning of round stitch marker was right here where I initially cast those stitches off. So one stitch before your new cast on stitches, place a marker. And then you're gonna knit cross those cast on stitches to one stitch after the cast on stitches and then you place another marker. So right here between your markers at this point in time you will have 12 stitches. Okay? And then you knit around and when you get to your marker you're going to slip that marker and then you're going to do a slip slip knit and knit to two stitches before the second marker and do a knit two together. And then you slip your marker and you knit all the way around again. On this next row you just knit all the way across even and then on the next row you do those two decreases again. So you slip your marker, you do a slip slip knit, you knit to two stitches before your next marker, you do a knit two together and you knit all the way around. So you'll continue that pattern of doing your two decreases, one row, the next row you just knit, until you get to where you only have two stitches left between your markers. And at that point in time, when you get to your marker, you'll slip it and then you'll just do a slip slip knit. And then uh, you can remove the next marker and then you just knit even up and keep knitting even till about what did I do okay so I did about four inches from this thumb spot from where I stopped my ribbing is about four inches to where I stopped doing um, just stock knit stitch so after you've decreased all the way down and you um, did your last slip slip knit, you just knit in the round until you have about four inches or until your desired length. You could stop here with your knitting and just do your ribbing, but I just wanted them a little longer. At that point in time, you start doing a knit one, purl one for another two inches and then you bind off. And make sure you don't bind off too tight because you don't want to be too tight up here. So doing that, it, this gives me the option of wearing them long so you don't have any gap between your jacket and your mitten or folding them up. And so they're more like a regular length um, mitten that's just short. Or you can even bunch them up like this one is, just kind of bunched up. I decided I wanted to film the thumb part separately so that I could zoom in and I'm knitting my uh, daughter a slightly smaller pair of fingerless mitts so I have that thumb hole here so this is the fingers part that can fold over and then here is where your thumbs gonna go right here so we need to make the thumb a little turtleneck thing, a little tube for it. So what you're going to do, you're going to pick up stitches around that thumb hole. And when you bound off, you bound off six stitches here, and then you cast on ten stitches here. 
So you're just going to pick up 16 stitches evenly around this little thumb hole. Now if you have um, issues with gapping here at the corners, you can pick up an extra stitch on each side and then on the next row you could knit those two together or purl those two together depending on which stitch you should be on in your one by one rib pattern to make it so that um, you have your 16 stitches again and if you have any issues with a hole on either side that would help to um, cover that. So after you've picked up your 16 stitches like I said you just do a one by one rib just like up here one knit one purl for um, however long your thumb is. For mine it is this long which is probably about an inch and a half. As you can see, you can see those decreases here, the little I guess, thumb gusset area. And this is where I picked up my stitches and knit my little ribbing. So without doing the little ribbing on your thumb, little thumb sweater part, your thumb will get cold. So I, I recommend doing it, but you don't have to. You could wear it without um, adding that onto your thumb, but your thumb will be colder than your fingers if you do that. Um, but I really enjoyed them, and I really enjoyed the, the fold here because when I don't need my fingers and I'm outside like walking the dog, I can tuck my little fingers in and they stay much warmer. And then if I need to use my little poopy bag to pick up my dog stuff, then I can fold it down and have access to my fingers or if I need to use my cell phone, um, I easily have access to my fingers, but they don't have to stay out in the weather and in the cold. So, I hope you guys found that helpful, and please let me know if you knit these, um, in case you're interested in the yarn color. It is color number 60605, and um, it's Monopolis. Right there's the colorway. Um, and I think they remind me of a sunset, like a sunset over the water. So I might call these like sunset mitts. So. Anyways, I hope you like them. And like I said, tell me if you knit them. Um, they're easy to do. If you knit socks, these are even easier than that. So, yeah, let me know what you do. <laughs> okay, on to other knitting. I have been busy, as always, with my knitting. And I have not cut off my strings because I'm that kind of person. <laughs> but, I have a finished object. We'd start with that. If you can remember last time, I have um, I had the alpaca from Alpaca Wacka Fiber Farm Barn and Pastures. It was yarn that was gifted to me. And this is based in North Carolina in the USA. And I have two skeins of it, so it says it's sport weight, about 200 yards a piece. And I don't have, I have some left over. Don't have that with me. I have a good bit left over, actually. I haven't weighed this to see how much. I have more of the cream than I do of the brown, though. So I've made the Flying Solo Cowl 
by um, Espace Trico. Um, but I've modified it slightly because they have two, I think it's two fingering weights, and they marl them together. And I think they have three different colorways, and they just kind of marl them to make kind of a gradient. I just had the two colors, and it was thicker, so I decided just to knit it um, single, with a single skein instead of doubling it up. But I kind of wanted to get a bit of a transition in the middle. I was originally going to just stripe it, but I decided to actually do color work um, and just a one by one color work instead of striping it. So the bottom has that flap so it can sit over your shoulder, and I'll try it on in a minute for you. Um, so you don't have a gap in the front or in the back, um, and it fits underneath like a coat really easy. Um, and then, like I said, I did a one by one. Um, color work here but I did it a little different I did a knit one with the cream and then I did a pearl one with the brown I think it makes a slightly different texture and I think it turned out kind of cute and then I just did the um, cream by itself the top um, the one by one single ribbing here, not the color work, is stretchier and kind of squishier. The one by one color work, it still stretches plenty, but it's not quite as stretchy and it definitely feels denser. And part of the reason I wanted to do color work here instead of just having, um, the, like doing the horizontal stripes, is because I wanted it thicker so that it would stop more of the wind from coming in and just be a little bit warmer. Because with the color work, you basically have a double layer of yarn. So this is the back. I think the back kind of looks cool. So I will try it on for you. With all these knits, I'm going to be very warm. So as you can see, it's pretty long. It's got the split so it goes over my shoulder really easy and covers any gap that my sweater might have in the front. And um, let's see, my hair pushes it down a little bit in the back, otherwise it would kind of, I think, stand up higher. But um, like I went and took a walk with my husband and my dogs the other day and it was like 18 degrees or something in the morning so it was, for me that's fairly cold and so I wore it up like this but it um, it just stayed up like this it didn't um, it doesn't really totally fall down on itself um, it doesn't stay all the way up on my nose but it does stay like over my chin and mouth so that's kind of nice it kept me nice and warm. Um, it is, this fiber does have some of those guard hairs in it that alpaca can have. Um, so it's, it's not super soft, but it doesn't really bother me too much. I was also though <laughs> considering lining it with um, something like felt or something. And part of that is um, if it's really cold and windy, that would make it even warmer and then it would also be very soft on my neck but I'm a little worried about doing that and then it's a synthetic fiber and it might get synthetic fibers make me um, like instead of just being warm like I feel a little bit sweaty in them and I don't want to have that feeling so I might leave it as is and then I also talked about putting elastic in the top and I haven't decided if I'm going to do that or not still debating on that. It would be kind of nice to make it stay over my nose. Because now it, it doesn't stay over my nose. But it is warm and cozy. Let's see. My last whip is kind of a half object. 
I do not remember the designer of these or, um, or the name of the pattern. So I will write that here somewhere. Um, but I got it in my head that I wanted some super warm mittens for uh, staying outside in cold weather. And I had heard from, I think it's the Knitting Traditions podcast, how she went skiing with her family and her brother had like regular gloves, but they were like skiing gloves. They were made for that. Um, and she had color work, real wool mittens on and how um, his fingers got cold and hers did not at all. And she actually gave him her mittens to warm his hands up. So that inspired me <laughs> to find a color work mitten pattern this one is free, and I will put all the information below, and I've done one. So I did not do any gauge swatch for this, and I actually haven't measured my gauge yet. Um, I knit the medium size, and I feel like it's just slightly too short. I don't know if I have long fingers or what. I kind of wish I had knit maybe the next size up. She has small, medium, and large. Um, they fit, and I haven't blocked them. I wasn't thinking I would block them, but I might now just to, I need like a half an inch maybe of length. The width is fine. It's the length. I feel like I need just a tiny bit more from like the base of the thumb to the tip of the finger. So this is knit out of the, was it Lion Brand? Fisherman's Wool is the cream, the same as I made my um, Snow is Coming sweater out of. And the black is Patton's wool um, leftover scraps. Um, so this is the back of it. And this is the first ever color work mittens I've ever done. So I was proud of myself. I thought they turned out cute. I did mess up on my pattern down here, but I don't really care. Here's the front side and the thumb. So. I think they're kind of cute. But like I said, I wish they were just, just like that much longer would fit just beautifully. But they're super cute. So I've started making the second one and I've accidentally made my cuff just a tiny bit longer than the other one. And I think I might have made it like two stitches wider too. I wasn't thinking when I was knitting this. I skipped the whole cuff and started knitting this, this part by accident and then I had to rip it out and do the cuff, but I, I don't know, I think I did, like you do the cuff and then you increase like just a couple of stitches for the main part, and I think that I um, increased down here instead of up here. Anyways, it doesn't matter that much. I'm not that concerned. My daughter wants to steal this because it's warm and she's always cold, um, and she likes it. She thinks it's like a puppet. So, oh, I'm on my way to a second warm mitten. Yay! All right. Um, I think that's all for now. And um, I will do another video about our stash busting cow. Um, I think I might just do Gaby's knit goodies stash busting cow, or else a West knit stash busting stash busting cow. It, let me know in the comments if you want Gaby's Knit Goodies stash busting cow or West Knits stash busting cow. Would you rather just have it be you just use your stash for anything or would you rather have more of a theme like the West Knits patterns? I'm torn. <laughs> but I am going to do the Pinguono. I have decided that. So I'm going to do a West Knits pattern. Um, and in our cow, which is knit along, if you don't know, um, I don't care if you double dip into other people's knit alongs, you can post in everybody's. I will eventually set up a Ravelry thread as well as a, um, we'll do it on Instagram too. So anyways, I hope that your fingers stay warm and cozy when it's cold out. <laughs> Bye.